So that stock's over $100, Andrew. Second quarter profit of $4.83 a share, well above the $2.81 consensus estimate. Revenue also above Wall Street forecast. Joining us now in a first on CNBC interview, AutoNation chairman and CEO Mike Jackson. Um, trying to remember where AutoNation shares were on, in the lows of the lows, Mike, but that would have been a good time. Was it, was it three or four at the pandemic lows? Uh, no, I think we were in the 20s someplace, Joe. But I remember 08, 09, we were in the fours. So, in the four. You know, uh, over 22 years, I've seen it all. But uh, I kind of like being over 100. It's a, it's a great feeling. You made it. Uh, so this is not the, the first record in terms of uh, results you've had. So how many of the last reports that you've done in the last four or five quarters have been record results? So, Joe, this is our fifth all-time consecutive record, meaning we're comparing it against an all-time record, what was an all-time record, uh, in the uh, second quarter of uh, 2020. So uh, it's quite an accomplishment. Now, uh, as you and I talked uh, a year ago, Joe, I felt a seismic shift in the demand for personal transportation as one of the consequences of the pandemic. Uh, I called it out then. People want bigger homes. They want more electronics in their homes. Uh, and uh, the American spirit of independence and controlling who's with them and when they go where uh, after shelter in place uh, was unleashed. And I think the pandemic was a scarring event, as it should be. So I see demand for personal individual vehicles uh, continuing into the years ahead. So the environment is good. Within that, AutoNation's performance is absolutely outstanding. We have this powerful combination of a brand, a great customer experience, a digital platform, operating capability, and that all led to achieving an all-time record revenue of $7 billion uh, in the second quarter of this year. That was driven by a 50% increase in revenue for new vehicles and a 65% increase in revenue for pre-owned vehicles, because I was very bullish a year ago uh, on the marketplace, and we purchased aggressively on the pre-owned side and have uh, never stopped. Pricing is good uh, when you have this level of demand compared to supply. The manufacturers have made a heroic attempt to restart production and keep it as high as they as they can. If I look at shipments to AutoNation, they're double what they were a year ago, and they're only 6% behind what they were in 2019, but demand is far higher. And with the disruption uh, from microchips, uh, they're doing everything they can. I will also tip my hat to the fact that they've really prioritized which type of vehicles get uh, the chips. Very smart, very shrewd, Build what people want to buy and don't worry about the rest. So there could be some profound lessons uh, for the industry coming out of this horrific, awful, mind-blowing pandemic period. I guess, yeah, I was thinking that must have been 13 years ago when you were down in the single digits. I'm getting my, my crises mixed up, but that was the financial crisis. And then, yeah, you only got down in the yeah, in the, well. The in, been through in, a couple in the of 20s them. this time. At least that's, yeah. at least yeah, that's my probably. recollection, Joe. Now, so EVs, the beauty is whenever... Now, let me just finish one more, yeah. one more point. Whenever uh, I'm bullish on a delocation, a dislocation like something like this over my entire career of AutoNation, we've, we repurchase shares aggressively when we see uh, a, a, a opportunity. Um, and during the second quarter, we repurchased 9% of the outstanding shares of the company. I've combined that with what we did in the first quarter, and we've repurchased 15% of the outstanding shares of AutoNation thus far this year. So uh, that's a clear statement of confidence in the future right. of the automotive retail marketplace right. and the future of AutoNation. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.